a Stuart 10V steam engine rebuild. This is part one, the introduction and overview. A 10V type steam engine is quite small, it's only about six inches tall. And this particular example arrived very well packed the other day. To the left of the engine, in a polythene bag, are the steam chest and steam chest cover gaskets. This engine was built a long time ago, and its build quality is sort of okay. Something that I immediately notice is that the exhaust port is actually not where it's supposed to be, but I think I can work around this. This was sent to me by a customer to be built into a steam plant using a boiler and other bits and pieces from a company called Clevedon Steam, who manufacture very high quality steam plants in kit form. The web address for Clevedon Steam is on screen at the moment. Before I can build this engine into a steam plant, I need to make sure that A, it runs, and B, it runs reliably. The only thing that I can see that is obvious with this engine is the position of the exhaust outlet. In this assessment, I need to see whether the engine runs, and if it does, how well it runs. I connected my airline via a piece of silicone rubber, I lubricated the cylinder first before connecting the airline and running it. I can immediately see that there is a problem and I have a good idea what the problem is. Even though the valve timing is quite correct, you can hear that there is air blowing in two distinct parts of the stroke. When I let go of the flywheel, the engine runs and initially it doesn't sound too bad, although I can detect the blowing at each end of the stroke. It's also knocking a bit. I'm taking this opportunity just to wipe some of the filth off it, as it's been sat around for many years gathering dust. It sort of runs okay, I've heard a lot worse. I can hear that the piston is blowing and also the valve is blowing, so I'm going to look into this in greater detail. I also noticed that the valve chest cover is not very straight, it's a little bit on the wonky side. This is cosmetic, but it really spoils the look of the engine. I also noticed that the studs on the valve chest and valve chest cover are not long enough. These need changing for slightly longer ones. Luckily, I always carry a good stock of these that I buy from Stuart Models. In this clip you can see that every one of the studs is too short, and it doesn't look good, the studs do need to stick out a little bit from the nuts. This will all be corrected in the fullness of time. The reason for the valve chest cover being a bit wonky is that the holes both in the valve chest and the cover are much larger than they need to be. This is a quick fix and nothing to worry about. Once I replaced the valve chest cover, I gave it another run. When I apply any pressure to the flywheel, there clearly isn't much power and the engine knocks badly. And it doesn't run very well slowly either. In this clip, you can clearly hear that the compressed air is escaping at this part of the stroke. This is no good at all and requires attention. Clearly, I need to look a lot further into the inside workings of the engine. And here I'm removing the four nuts that hold the steam chest cover in position so I can remove the steam chest and have a closer look at what is happening to the internal components of the engine. In order to remove the steam chest itself, I need to remove the eccentric rod from the valve fork, but both of these parts were very tight. Believe it or not, I had to tap it gently with a hammer to remove it from the valve fork. And then I found this. Just one of the problems that I'm going to have to contend with. The ports have not been milled deep enough, but to be honest, normally these are cast in. I don't know what's gone on here. As the builder drilled from the edges of the cylinder to the inlet ports, the drill bit came through a little bit too early and damaged the port face. There are two ways to fix this problem. The first one is to remachine a new cylinder. I really don't want to do that, although I'm tempted, but this has to be a sympathetic restoration. I could do what I'm going to do with the Sweet Pea locomotive, put some plates 
in between the steam chest and the port face, but I don't want to do that either. I've come up with an idea that should be satisfactory for the job. What I do need to do, and I'll do it at this stage, is enlarge the slots in the valve, because the valve is binding on the drive block. And this can cause no end of problems. It's very important that the valve is held against the port by steam pressure only, and it must not get stuck on the drive block. Also, at this stage, I do notice that the valve fork is a little bit wonky. As a total change of direction, the first thing I'm going to do is thread the hole in the eccentric sheave 6BA. It was threaded 5BA with a brass bolt in there, and that's no good. You cannot apply enough pressure to the crankshaft with a brass bolt. By threading this part 6BA, I can fit a 6BA grub screw. I have plenty of these and use them a lot. These are Allen head grub screws, and by using an Allen key, you can get a really tight fit on the crankshaft. This will allow the valve timing to remain constant once it's been set. With the brass screw, it wandered about all over the place. I'm going to remove the valve fork, complete with the valve rod, from the drive block. And when I removed these parts, I noticed that there wasn't any packing in the gland. In this clip, I'm tightening the valve fork onto the valve spindle because it was loose. And at this part of the job, the valve fork broke off the spindle. So I think this needs a bit of attention. The valve rod had been threaded with a very small thread that was just not strong enough for the job. I'm putting all the parts that are removed from the engine in this polythene box. This is essential for me because often I have several projects on the go at any given time and I don't want to get the parts mixed up. I think now's as good a time as any to just check the fit of a new set of studs. And the first thing I need to do is remove these to generally have a look at the port face in more detail, clean it up and maybe effect a repair. More about this in a future episode. A general inspection of the crankshaft tells me that the flywheel end is OK, but the other end has a bit of wear on it. I think the crankshaft is probably worn at this end by the very tight fit of the eccentric rod into the valve fork. That is a general overview. It's not all bad news. I need to look inside the cylinder, but I will do that in the next episode. I will also be cleaning up the engine because I want to paint it. It's no good making a steam plant if the engine is in bare cast iron because it will go rusty. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.